There we go. All right, so this is Sunday morning, the 5th of November, and it's 10 a.m., and we're going to delve into the realm of judgment a little bit this morning with this word, which I titled Attack and Counterattack. And this really came out of just what we've been experiencing. This is nothing new. None of these words come out of theory. They're really born out of being in the trenches. And in most instances, it's, it's, it's confirming what each and every one of you are experiencing on some level. Uh, in some cases, maybe you've been able to kind of connect the dots. Uh, in other cases, uh, maybe it's waiting for a word like this just to kind of bring it to the focal point. But we're moving into the realm of judgment. And we haven't walked this way before. And I don't know that we've really ever moved into the realm of judgment. I don't, I don't think we have if we look at it from the, the fact that it's a it's an anointing, it's a commission, it's a mantle, but it's something more than just a random act of uh, exercising dominion over this and over that, uh, a battle here, a battle there. We're really talking about moving into a realm, and uh, and this is new, and so it would explain to some degree the intensity of the warfare against the saints of the Most High during this time. Uh, and I, I think you know we're fortunate. There's maybe a handful here that are tracking on this. Um, but we know the sons aren't relegated to uh, just a few. I know that they're scattered over the face of the earth. Uh, and as God moves the sons into, uh, you know, these realms of functioning, I believe that uh, those whose hearts are ready uh, are equally moving in to this, whether they have a connection with anyone or not. It's just a realm and dimension that begins to open up. It's like this whole aspect of resurrection life that I I mentioned recently. And the Lord was very specific. I, I was really interesting when he said, okay, the, f- the first breakthrough is going to be just by two or three. And as soon as they've broken through, then... There will be subsequent breakthroughs into resurrection life, but it won't be like a wave of just a mass a mass exodus out of this dimension. But it will be those whose hearts are ready and prepared. And so, like everything that God does, you know, He'll bring a word and He'll lay a table out for every man. And depending upon the level you're on, you'll hear the word where you are at and what you need. And so, to some, the word, you know, will will be one thing, and to another, it will be something entirely different. But it's all predicated on the preparation of heart. And so, when the Lord begins to open up something new in a whole realm of experience, it really is uh, uh, determined upon the depth of preparation. So, I know that we're moving into a realm of judgment. And I know that it's something that we haven't walked in before. And this is just coming to me now. So this is a bit different than just having moved in judgment. It's like in the day of the church age, you moved in the gifts. But in the day of the kingdom, you are the gifts. And so we've moved in elements of judgment and the ministry of judgment. And yet, as we come into the days of the kingdom, you become judgment. 
And that's been shown to us several times over the years that the sons become judgment. And that is what we've become. But it's coming into focus. It's like looking through the camera. The other day I was trying to shoot some videos and I'm looking through the lens thinking, okay, I got this thing focused. Only it wasn't quite focused enough. And so these words are kind of bringing things into focus. It's like, okay, you've, you've been focused on it, but it hasn't been really clear. But as we come into this, it's becoming very clear that God has brought us into a realm of judgment. And that, that you know, it works in concert with the fact that we are judgment, but it's just, uh, I don't know how to explain it, uh, but it is just what's happening. And so there's a number of things we want to talk about this morning. Um, I've had a chance to go over a number of visions that had not been actually transcribed in the last several months, a couple of which I want to bring out. I'm still working on them. But we want to talk about what's happening in the camp of the enemy. And I also want to talk about what's happening in general, in the earth, on the earth plane, to the whole, all of the inhabitants in the world. Um, these are things that we've seen, and it's interesting that up until now, we haven't done anything with them. And, you know, it, 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 it's interesting when the Lord reveals things, because He reveals things for a purpose, you know, and, and that purpose is that you act upon what is re- revealed. But there's also a timing. And my tendency has been, you know, I just get a little bit and run down the road. And yet the Lord, you know, sometimes it's not all complete. So you have to kind of be patient and just wait until it comes into clarity and then the right time you know, comes and you begin to move. So, you know, we've been talking about the rod of iron ministry. And that's no small thing. Um, So let's back up here before we actually get into, you know, some of the meat. I want to talk about just a basic principle Ann and I were reviewing this this morning, and it's always good to review some basic, basic principles that exist in the spirit, because the spirit realm, like the natural realm, is governed by principles that God has set up, you know, like gravity. It's a principle. You can't not acknowledge gravity. It just is. It it controls elements on the natural plane. So in the realm of spirit, there are principles that have been created. Now, Satan understands those principles, and he's become quite a master at utilizing them to his own gain. Um, and we are only still coming to understand these principles. But one of them has to do with... Um, what we would call the boomerang principle. And it becomes important at this point in time because Satan's looking for any door of access that he can use to come against the saints. And the more clean you get, the more disconnected from this world, from the bonds, the contacts, the soul ties, and all of that, the less... Uh, access the enemy has to come in the back door against against you. But there's one that we have to be very careful about. And it goes back into this whole thing that we don't war with flesh and blood, but with the spirits of wickedness in heavenly places. And I know that we know that. But there are times when the soul flesh gets in the midst and just, you know, 
wants to take and run it down the road and uh, go after it on a, a level of the soul. And oftentimes I've wondered, Lord, you know, we're, we're getting hit here. There's transference. There's things that are coming in. And you know that you're warring with the spirits of wickedness, but they're working through channels because they just really can't just come out against you without having some human channel to really make it uh, have that, that power behind it. And how often we've prayed, okay, Lord, you know, who is it? Where is it? You know, what are, what are the channels? And a lot of times we don't know what those channels are. We can surmise, we can guesstimate, but we're not 100% certain. And I think there's been a reason for that, because everything has its timing by virtue of your preparation and the maturity that God brings forth in the sons, because we've got to be careful not to move in the realm of soul, in the realm of reaction, vindication, anger, hatred, malice, you name it. And and I can tell you for a fact, if I knew more than I know now as far as some of the channels, I would be tempted when the battle is hot and heavy to just want to take the channel out and that is not what God wants us to do, nor would that be pleasing to him. And so, you know, you read through the scriptures, it talks about bless and curse not. It talks about love your enemies. And, you know, that can be kind of interesting, especially when you're, the enemy that you perceive is coming at you, uh, you know, big time. And so you just want to go and take a, uh, you know, a ball bat and just beat the heck out of the enemy. Uh, and we have to be very careful that we are dealing with the realm of spirit and not with the human agencies that the spirit world has been able to latch upon. And so thus, I think the Lord, in his carefulness, has been cautious to reveal the channels at times because of the tendency to move in the flesh or soul and just, you know, take that one out. And I'm guilty. You know, I'd say, okay, Lord, you know, I want that one gone. Just wipe that one out. And I would say, okay, well, Lord, you you remember the, 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 what happened in the book of Acts, Paul, you know, said Alexander the coppersmith, man, he was, he was out of order. And he prayed, okay, Lord, take him out, you know, that perchance his spirit might be saved in the day of Christ. So I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I'm cashing in on that. Take that one out, would you? Uh, but I can't say in the past that I've been really zero in those situations, if you understand what I'm saying. So there's a carefulness because... As the doors close of access into the saints, one big door still looms open, and that is your response or reaction against the channels that the, the enemy uses. And, and so everything in the realm of spirit is, you know, it's, it's when you, you, know, you read about it, it says, bless and curse not. You know, everything, it's like, you know, we've, 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 we've talked, you know, you, you, you get what you put out. You know, what goes around comes around, as they say. And so, if you're reacting in the soul with anger, malice, hatred, you name it, the problem is it's going to boomerang back upon you. And that's why the word says, you know, bless and curse not, just bless, because If they don't receive the blessing, it comes back to you. And so, you know, we need to understand that principle because we're going to be in positions where it's going to become more and more clear the various channels 
that are being utilized and the channels that themselves may or may not be aware of what they're doing, or they may be very much aware of what they're doing. But in any instance, we have to be very careful not to move in the realm of the soul, in the realm of reaction, uh, judgment. You know, we're not here to judge anyone. Uh, you know, the word says, in my word will judge. All we have to do is speak the word. The word is what judges. And the word returns to, the, to us, you know, if someone doesn't accept it. So, concerning human channels, you know, that's just going to happen by virtue of their choices. But we have to be careful to stay zero and stay out of the firing line on that one. Because the tendency, I tell you, when, when the battle gets really heavy and you know where it's channeling from, there are times when it can be very difficult that you just don't want to go take a ball bat and beat the person up. And it just, you know, you're, you're the only one that's going to get hurt in that situation because it will boomerang back on you. Just as, and, 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 and so when you move in the realm of blessing and you just, you know, Lord, I, I don't harbor anything against the individual. It's just whatever. And you're just there. You know, you bless, but you're not open on some soul level of, well, I'm going to have to reach out and love this person, and I have to bless them. Well, that's not it either. God's not saying, okay, go ahead and move in the realm of soul and open your heart and love and bless. That's not it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, it, this is a commodity of spirit. You know, you are blessing, and that's just... So what happens when individuals lash out and come against you if there's no response in you then it just goes back upon their own head you don't have to do a thing it boomerangs back to to them so that just is one thing I just thought it would be good to just touch on because um it's going to be something that comes up more and more. And the reason it's going to is because we're coming more and more into the realm of light. And like the word says, I think it's in First John, in your light, I see light. So what's happening to us? God is bringing us into his presence deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's happening every day. It's, 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 it's a moment-by-moment moment unfolding experience. And so you're being, we could say, birthed or brought into the realm of pure light. And with that, you will see all things. That which has been hidden is being revealed as the suns come into the realm of light. And so... The channels of hatred that the enemy has used, and there are many, are going to become more and more exposed to the suns. And it'll be important that we handle that correctly, and that we don't respond on the realm of the soul. But we understand, you know, what's happening, and we move accordingly. So the title of this word, attack and counterattack, which is really the point that I wanted to bring out here this morning, is dealing with the fact that we are being effective. God has launched us into a realm of judgment. The words we speak are being effective. They're not just random words. They are spirit. They are life. And there is an authority behind the words that we're speaking like there has never been before because we haven't been on this level before. But what I've seen as we've walked through the past couple of weeks, as we continue to move with authority over situations that arise uh, things that, 
you know, you're directed in the spirit to take dominion over, I'm finding two things happening. One, it's being effective. It is being implemented. It is definitely knocking heads and things are changing. But on the flip side, I have seen the enemy countering with an equal or greater force than what we even put out initially. And so the word talks about how the violent will take the kingdom by force. Well, I would have to say that there is another level of violence that we're coming into. I don't want to say that we have to come into or put it off in the future. I'm just going to say that we're coming into. It's not a violence of the flesh, obviously. It's not going to be that we're going to be screaming, you know, pounding the walls necessarily. It's a violence of spirit. But we have to understand that we're in this transition of authority, this transition of believing and knowing who we are. When this transition is complete, or the more this transition completes within us, the less resistance we will find in the realm of spirit. But while we're in this transition, there's a push and shove going on because we believe, but we don't quite entirely believe. But we believe more than we did before. And because of that, the word we're speaking is hitting the mark and it's beginning to effectuate changes. But what's happening is there's still that, that little bit of a, of a you know, transition we don't fully believe, we're, but we're getting there. And so the enemy pushes back and pushes back with even a greater force than what we put out. And so th- there's been a tendency to speak a word, take dominion over you know, whatever it is the Lord's been revealing, and then just kind of go on to the next thing. And assume, well, okay, it's done. Only find that the enemy's response, you know, has been to push back even harder. And unless you're diligent to just stay, you know, to stay in the mode, because what we're talking about here is a lifestyle. It's kind of interesting. I mean... This lifestyle that we're talking about cannot be maintained on the realm of soul. It can only be maintained in His presence. I mean, anyone else would think you're crazy if you say, well, yeah, I'm, you know, the lifestyle that God is bringing the sons into is one of executors of His estate. What does that mean? Well, it means they're out there executing His will. They're moving in dominion. They're beginning to subject the kingdoms of this age. But what's happening in the transition are the rulers and powers and thrones and dominions are pushing back because the word is hitting home. It is breaking bottlenecks. It is bringing chaos. It is bringing, you know, definite judgment. Things are rolling. But there is a pushback that's happening uh, that almost has a, a greater force than what we initially uh, utilized. And so you begin to realize, Lord, you're bringing us into a lifestyle, uh, 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 another uh, level of lifestyle that is demanding uh, another change within us of even greater intensity. And you can say, oh, gosh, Lord, aren't we already living intensely? I mean... You know, our lives are intense. Your lives are intense. And yet he's bringing it into an even greater intensity. That, you know, it's, you know, it's one thing to drive the stake. It's another thing to take the hammer and keep pounding that stake until, you know, until the job is completed. And so 
that's where the attack and counterattack, because I saw that, you know, I just, well, I thought to myself, whoa, what is this? You know, we, you know, this, this push came back in the spirit. And I thought, what is that? And I realized, okay, he's pushing back, but he's only pushing back because we hit pay dirt. And there's, to the degree that we're still in this transition, to that degree, the pushback is happening. But it's all in transition. And I just, it, to me, I just think we need to realize that what God sets before us, individually, collectively, whatever, it's something that we cannot just do once and move on down the road. It's something that we're going to have to maintain and keep doing and keep exercising uh, the authority. So one of the visions that came a few months back, and we didn't do anything with it. There's a couple of them. And I don't think it was the time because we're not where we are now then, or well, you know what I'm saying. We're in a different place than when the appearing came. But um, we're talking about what is developing in the realm of the enemy's camp. And I think it's going to be very interesting that the Lord's going to continue to reveal uh, different aspects uh, that have been controlling the earth, controlling the world, uh, and or, um, you know, just other uh, aspects that are developing. So, you know, we've talked about moving with the Rod of Iron Ministry over realm after realm after realm, and and that is going to happen. Uh, it, it has already begun happening, but it will happen with more of a definitive clarity on exactly what we're doing, because, you know, honestly... I don't know that we know what we're doing. You know, we know that we're out there in point. We know that we're in the battle. And we get glimpses of exactly what we're doing. But a lot of time, you just don't know. You know, you know you're in the midst. But you're not exactly sure what bottleneck God has positioned you to break. And sometimes it feels like he's using your head to break it. Um, but that's Okay. Lord, if you want to use our head, that's fine. But what we saw a few months back has to do with uh, what the enemy is doing in uh, uh, gathering together a major force of evil that's uh, going to be coming against the birthing of the kingdom of God. And it's probably enfolding, you know, even as we've been speaking, perhaps over the last few months. But now, with this word, we're going to begin to deal with it. And uh, it has to do with an area in Europe called the Netherlands, and which is a country that really never existed um, they actually created it by blocking waters and channels and canals, whatever. But the whole history of the Netherlands is ra rather odd uh, and dark um, and um, leaves a lot of questions. But what I saw was beneath the Netherlands, which actually do exist, similar to the Vatican, are catacombs of tunnels and channels that exist beneath the city. And I wondered what it was I was seeing and why I was seeing it. And the Lord spoke that the enemy is gathering together uh, his, his army. And the Netherlands is the place that they are gathering. Now, we're not necessarily talking about the physical level here. We're talking more about a realm of spirit. But the enemy has been gathering uh, for some time uh, the forces of evil that will emanate from this region of the world uh, with a very set goal 
to undermine what uh, is coming forth in the release of the kingdom. And so what we're beginning to do now and we're going to do from this point on is to bring judgment on that region and in that area uh, in, and in what the enemy is doing. Uh, and we're going to start seeing chaos and confusion, which uh, uh, we've already seen happening at other uh, roundups, you might say, of, of the forces of darkness. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, we're, we're in the process of subjecting every kingdom and realm, and that's what God is doing and will do uh, progressively more and more through the suns. But while we're in the midst of that, you have this other side of the whole, you know, satanic forces that exist in the world um, that need to be dealt with uh, almost as a separate situation coming down. So, you know, here again, this is not something that we're doing, even though we're doing it. This is the Lord's battle, and it's his kingdom. All, we're, all we have to do, as I had mentioned recently, is speak the word. As the Lord begins to reveal, we just speak the word. And so today we're speaking the word into the whole realm of the Netherlands and the whole gathering of the camp of the enemy in that region of the world where they are coming together to make plans against the Almighty. I declare that confusion reigns in the camp of the enemy, an inability to communicate, and this thing is brought to naught. And we see a spirit of judgment flow into that region like a bright light just coming down that cannot be denied. And, you know, so this is something that we're going to hold before the Lord. And it's all, you, you can take it very similar to, I, I believe it was Elijah that had uh, given the king some arrows. You remember the story, it goes back in the, the book of Kings. And he was commanded to beat the arrows. Well, the king only beat the arrows a couple times, and Elijah was rather disappointed and said, King, you know, you missed it because you're only going to get victory a couple times. You know, he needed to beat the arrows until there was nothing left. And so as we move forward, we're going to beat the arrows, but we're going to beat them and beat them and continually beat them. And whatever... God has revealed to you that needs to be done, whatever you know you have been commissioned to do in the realm of judgment uh, or taking dominion, it, ca- it can't just be a one-time thing. You take the arrows up and you just continue to speak the word into it. And concerning the Netherlands, this thing comes to naught. And I know that uh, it, between the Netherlands and there's a couple of other countries, uh, I'm not sure if where Amsterdam is located in the midst of all of that. But there's a several, you know, countries right right there, the nucleus of which the finances of the entire world are controlled. These this this is the major banking center for the entire world. And as judgment comes upon that which is being uh, accumulated in the Netherlands, there will be judgment on the finances of the world. You know, it, it's it's it. You know, it's hard at this point, perhaps, to put feet to the breadth of what is happening in uh, in that area. You know, you could say, well, there's legions of demons gathering, and there, and so, what does that mean? How is it going to uh, unfold? Uh, and some of that is yet to be understood, but. In the whole realm of finance, uh, and that is a realm, uh, that is going to be brought down now because that which has been wielded in power over the world from the forces of darkness that exist in that region which control the finances of the world, I declare it is brought down. They are no longer to manipulate, able to manipulate and, and, and move the currencies of this world in the way that they have done in wielding power. It's, it's come to an end. 
and it will you know it will continue to just fall from this point forward and we stand and we will continue to hit the arrows the judgment comes in that world in that area of the world now and can, and in and, and confusion in the camp of the enemy, an inability to communicate, an inability to plan or to carry out their their you know their thoughts. So that's one thing that we wanted to deal with this morning. Another one has to do with something. Let me uh, let me read that to you. Hold on a second. Okay, this is something that came not too not too long ago, and um, it's a little bit out there. And uh, I purposely didn't do much with it at the time, but began to just wait before the Lord concerning it. And you know, here again, I know a lot of this can be kind of mystical, can be kind of you know, you're just kind of reaching. But this has to do with the flow of darkness that's coming into the earth. We've talked about the way that uh, the, the, the tide of evil is going to be turned back is by virtue of the word that the sons speak. And... So what I saw was very interesting to me because if you can imagine, you know, a water filter, a water purifier, a lot of you have them in your homes. And so you turn the water on, the water goes to the purifier. And so the water you drink becomes purified. Well, what I saw, and really at, at the base level of creation, is a number of satanic individuals that were uh, that were and are uh, in charge of the manipulation of communication that goes into the earth. And, you know, Revelation talks about the sound of many waters, and there's a lot of references to the waters that flow, and, you know, in in the book of Revelations, in Ezekiel, you know, whatnot. But, um, What's been happening, and it doesn't take that much discernment to see it, is that the, fl- the influx of darkness into the earth has been coming through communication. It comes through what is being spoken into the earth plane. That's really where it, the darkness can really grab you know have its seat or its basis it's you know it's one thing to 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 see the infiltration of demonic spirits that come into the earth plane but it's still you know on a different level until those spirits have uh an agency through which to bring it into the natural plane and so what we've seen i've watched this And it's been going on for years and years and increasing is that the flow of darkness into the natural plane has been coming through the media, you know, the movies, the TV, the the books that are written, um, and just people reiterating the lies and deceptions that have been coming out of the mouth of the beast. I think it's Revelations 12, you know, when the beast goes to uh, uh, um, pursue the woman that gave birth to the child and and so on and so forth uh, it talks about the flood that comes out of his mouth but there's been a tremendous influx of darkness into the earth and it has come by virtue of the spoken word that has emanated through the mouths of millions and millions of people that have taken the word that has come and they've reiterated it over and over again, the word, you know, of darkness that comes out of the mouth of the enemy. And so as we began to watch, I saw these individuals, I think there were two or three high level, uh, I, I, I wouldn't even know what they are, 
they're more of an elemental level, but some sort of principality. I, I suppose it would be in that in that uh, arena, and basically they um, filtered every bit of communication that came out of the mouths of people, um, and as the words came through the filter, they took on 